In the news this week, Black Lives Matter rally host claims Indigenous Australians are fighting a humanitarian crisis. Meanwhile, the rally went ahead in Langley Park this weekend, despite the Premier urging citizens not to attend due to coronavirus risks. Whistleblower professor in the clear as university drops lawsuit. And on Western Perspective, young Australian artists reveal their wish lists for the government. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Sarah Smith. Good evening. The Indigenous host of Perth's Black Lives Matter rally claims her people are fighting a humanitarian crisis as the George Floyd protest from the US spread to Australia. Megan Kukrova said the campaign has strengthened the pressure on Australian governments to take action against suicide, incarceration and death in custody. Reporter Nelson Liu has this exclusive interview. You have your calls on this rally. What are you specifically wanting for Indigenous people? There's a statement, and a statement has five issues. Now I'll just read those to you. The first one, end racial violence. That's pertinent. Two, reduce the incarceration rate of Aboriginal people. Three, stop the removal of Aboriginal children. Four, addressing systemic racism. And five, sovereignty. You talked about death in custody, and this is an important point. Um, is it not being recognised enough? Absolutely not. Why is it not being recognised? It's not. Right now, right now, all the attention is on Western Australia and indeed across the nation. As Mr Floyd rests in peace, that has sparked the focus about what's happening here in our own country. This is something that's been happening to our people from the beginning of time. They can't continue in terms of the racism and the discrimination. You Australians know what you want, but knowing is not enough, is it? It has to be applied. Knowing is not enough. Silence is not good. Silence basically contributes to the problem. You have to voice it. If someone's in trouble, you will help. But it's about listening. Listening is one thing. You need to hear. And when you hear, you need to act. Those three go together. There's no point listening if you're not going to act. This rally and others like it around the country has caused an intensification of the prejudice issue towards Indigenous people. Is it a matter of, uh, if, you're not help, if you're not helping solve the issue, you're part of creating the problem? 100%. But, you know, people, people have their own personal circumstances. There's the coronavirus right now. We've got a lot of elderly people. And there's some people that won't be able to make the protests and the rallies. That doesn't mean to say that they can't extend their support. We held a poll asking our audience if they would turn out to this rally, and 90% said no. Um, two issues arose, uh, racism and COVID-19. Now, if there wasn't a coronavirus issue, um, do you think that people would still turn out and support you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Black lives matter. Everyone's life matter. People will still turn out. Reason being is because there's much more awareness about it. Should a rally like this matter to young people? The young people are our future. Us older people are fighting for the justice equalities for our young people. And the young people with this rally have been absolutely crucial. The post rally, what's the next step from here? Relentless pressure. Relentless pressure about the issues that we've raised, about the deaths in custody, about the incarceration, about the suicides, about the child removals. We, we're not going anywhere. And you can see Megan's exclusive 30-minute interview at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, streaming on the WAMN news page. Black Lives Matter protests have spread like wildfire across the world, with Australia's homegrown Black Lives Matter rally held in Perth this weekend. The event highlighted issues of Aboriginal deaths in custody, incarceration and more. Taylor Hanna reports. Thousands of people are gathered here at Langley Park in solidarity for the Black Lives Matter movement. We have unity amongst us, amongst our own people, amongst the non-Aboriginal people to get a message out there that we're going to be in their face all the time. Too many of our people have died. 437 Aboriginal people have died in custody since 1991. Aboriginal activists say enough is enough. This has to stop. I'm so happy to see you all because in solidarity, 
we can make this better for some of our families. The peaceful protest demands the government to end racial violence, reduce the incarceration rate of Aboriginal people, stop the removal of Aboriginal children, address systematic racism and sovereignty. Stop the killings of Aboriginal people, end racial violence and hate crimes. We demand independent investigation of all deaths in custody as required by international human rights law. The Black Lives Matter movement has gained momentum around the world and is continuing to raise awareness over the treatment of Aboriginal people here in WA. Taylor Hanna, WABN News. Murdoch University has permanently withdrawn a motion to remove whistleblower Professor Gerd Schroeder-Turk from his elected position on the University Senate. The motion was first raised in 2019 after the professor blew the whistle on an influx of high-fee paying international students that were unprepared for their courses. In a staff email, Murdoch University said that the university and academic would cease all legal action against each other as part of an agreed resolution. Shorter Turk told WAMN that he's pleased with the outcome. Importantly, today uh, was uh, not a decision by a judge, but it was a resolution that was found between uh, me and Murdoch University. And I'm, I'm really happy that we have found a resolution to enable us to move forward. Uh, I firmly believe uh, that transparent discussion is the best way to ensure good process. Tourism and Multicultural Interest Minister Paul Papalia met with multicultural community leaders to discuss the state's COVID-19 recovery plan. Following the meeting, he said cultural community groups had met with the needs of COVID-19 crisis well. Meanwhile, it's hoped that the digital revolution is helping people tap into political processes. This is uh, one of a range of events with different sectors of the community where we're seeking out a, a advice about how people, what the experience was, what the challenges were, uh, the extent of those challenges, then looking for innovation that took place in response within the sector, and then finally uh, um, ideas about applying potentially some of those innovations, but also other ideas about recovery. As the ABC stares down $41 million in budget cuts, the Media Entertainment and Arts Alliance says the media concentration in WA endangers our democracy. With 250 jobs needing to go at the public broadcaster, it's not only voluntary redundancies that are on the table. Tiffany Venning encouraged those who care about the issue to make their voices heard. BC and that independent voice that they bring to the table, then absolutely I would urge and encourage folk to you know, get online, email your local MP um, and show your support. The Chonghua Association WA has distanced itself from recent comments made by the Chinese government, warning students that studying in Australia carries risks of racial abuse. Dr Ting Chen and Honorary Secretary Jenny Chong told WAMN News that recent reports of racism are isolated incidents that do not pose an ongoing risk to international students. She says Chonghua is able to support anyone who do experience racism while studying in Australia. This is a multicultural community. We support and respect each other. Yes, we invite any, any members of the community to contact Shunwa if they have any issues with racism in WA. The Republican Party has nominated President Donald Trump as the United States election in November edges closer. The Democratic and Republican National Conventions are showstoppers, but both conventions face disruption over the coronavirus. Mr. Trump has moved his convention from North Carolina to Florida as the governor of the state refused to lift gathering restrictions. The party's chairman says the move will be beneficial due to its importance to the Republican campaign. Twitter has reportedly deleted more than 170,000 accounts, accusing the account holders of spreading false information about the coronavirus, Hong Kong protests and pro-China messages. Among the deleted accounts, more than 23,000 of them are highly active. Twitter has also shut down thousands of Russian accounts suspected of being used as political tools to support the government and attack the opposition online. Open Hands Creative had barely been open for a year when COVID-19 forced the equal arts business to pause its sketch workshops. Founder Morgan Shaftman says the crisis forced her to push more into online workshops and selling sustainable craft supplies. 
As restrictions ease, Open Hand's online crisis innovation has paid off in ticket sales. As soon as I put them online, everyone's like, yay, finally, we can go outside, we can go to Morgan's workshop. A lot of people are excited about our gin and tonic workshop. That's our most popular. I think there's only two spots left. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest news on our website and social media pages. No matter what you're watching, thanks for being with us and have a pleasant evening. Take care.